The spread of Christianity in Western Europe and then around the world has had an immense impact on the history of Western civilization. The story of Christianity's triumph as the dominant religion of first Roman Europe and later many parts of the world is a fascinating one. The followers of Jesus, known as the Apostles, spread out across the Mediterranean after his death to preach his gospel. But for almost 300 years, Christianity remained a relatively small and often persecuted religious sect. That all changed when Emperor Constantine began to at first allow the worship of Christ within the empire and later to actively promote Christianity's spread, even accepting baptism before his death. However, even with the change to Christianity at the top of the Roman world, at the time of Constantine's death, only about 20% of the Roman populace was Christian. How did Christianity go from a religious minority to the overwhelming spiritual, cultural, and political institution that dominated much of the Roman or former Roman lands within a century or two? Before we jump into this fascinating story, if you're interested in early access to videos and live chats with the creator of Intrigued Mind, consider subscribing to our Patreon. Your support will greatly help us keep the channel producing more intriguing content. In the aftermath of Constantine's conversion, Christianity became the official religion of the Roman Empire and began to be actively promoted by the state. This led to the establishment of a number of bishoprics and the construction of churches throughout the empire. As Christianity spread, it encountered a variety of pagan religions, each with its own pantheon of deities. In order to facilitate the conversion of these peoples to Christianity, the early Christians often incorporated elements of the old religions into their own. The process of Christianization or the spread of Christianity throughout Europe is a complex and multifaceted phenomenon that occurred over the course of several centuries. However, one intriguing method by which Christianity came to wholly dominate the spiritual, social, and political realms of Western Europe was through the replacement of pagan deities with Christian saints. In the pagan religions prevalent in Europe prior to the spread of Christianity, gods and goddesses were worshipped for their supposed control over various aspects of life and the natural world. These deities were often deeply ingrained in the cultures, traditions, and physical locations of the people who worshipped them. In many ways, these gods and goddesses were approachable in the sense that you can make an offering to them in a specific way or at a specific place and believe you would receive a specific response. It was a very hands-on form of spirituality. Christianity, however, is a monotheistic religion. While some people may find the idea of a single, all-powerful deity more appealing than the idea of multiple deities, given how long the diversity of belief and practice that is often associated with paganism had been in place, it was a very hard step for many people to make. There was only one God, granted split into three parts via the Trinity, and making appeals for specific everyday or mundane matters did not seem appropriate for an all-powerful single God. For instance, Romans did not pray to Jupiter, derived from the Zeus of classical Greece, to help with the harvest or to aid a physical melody. Bridging this gap would become an important step for Christianity to succeed in a world dominated by a pagan belief structure. With the support of the Roman elite up to and including the emperor, conversion to Christianity became a much more appealing prospect. After Constantine's conversion, a large number of urban dwellers were soon worshipping the Christian trinity. However, Paganism remained incredibly entrenched outside the cities where the Roman state's influence was less pronounced. Moreover, even in the cities, it was not always easy for these converts to completely abandon their old pagan deities, their everyday rituals, and their holy places. Many people continued to venerate them alongside their new Christian beliefs. It was such an issue that bishops often had to admonish their congregations that maintaining any devotion or practices they had held while pagan was unacceptable. Ambrose, the Bishop of Milan, famously led a campaign against the restoration of the Altar of Victory in the Senate House in the late 5th century. To address these lingering vestiges of paganism in professed Christians, the early church developed a strategy of replacing the pagan deities with Christian saints. Although this was probably not a conscious decision made by church leaders, it was an organic process that proved to be incredibly successful. For example, Saint George was often depicted as a warrior and was revered as a protector, similar to the pagan god Mars. Similarly, St. Christopher was revered as a patron of travelers, similar to the pagan god Hermes. The characteristics and attributes of a particular pagan god were attributed to a Christian saint, and the saint became the focus of worship in place of the pagan deity. If there was a pagan goddess of love, she might be replaced with St. Valentine, the patron saint of love. Or, if there was a pagan god of the sea, he might be replaced with St. Peter, the patron saint of fishermen. This approach allowed the Christians to incorporate elements of the old pagan religions into Christianity, making it easier for people to make the transition. It also helped to spread the new religion by offering a familiar framework for people to understand it within. Saints were more approachable for everyday, sometimes mundane spiritual needs in a way an all-powerful God was not. In this way, 
Christian saints replaced pagan deities as the primary objects of veneration in many parts of Europe, a process that contributed to the eventual dominance of Christianity in the region. It is worth noting that this process was not always peaceful or voluntary, and in some cases it involved coercion and persecution of those who refused to convert. Amazingly, Christianity very quickly went from a religion of the persecuted to a religion of persecutors. I'm not sure how Jesus would have felt about that. But when the tables turned and the Christians found themselves wielding far more power than previously, the state and church certainly used it to their advantage. But often, instead of persecution and coercion, the Catholic Church instead tried to subsume the extant religion with its own version, a softer form of exerting their influence. For example, the Celtic peoples of Britain and Ireland worshipped a pantheon of deities that included gods and goddesses associated with nature, fertility, and war. When Christianity arrived in these regions, the early missionaries sought to replace these deities with Christian saints. One such example is St. Patrick, who is revered as the patron saint of Ireland. According to legend, Patrick was able to convert the Irish to Christianity by incorporating elements of their pagan religion into his teachings. He is said to have used the shamrock, a symbol of the pagan trinity, to explain the concept of the Christian trinity to the Irish people. Similarly, the early Christians in Germany and Scandinavia sought to replace the pagan deities of these regions with Christian saints. In Germany, the pagan god Woden was replaced with Saint Boniface, who was revered as the patron saint of Germany. In Scandinavia, the pagan goddess Freya was replaced with Saint Bridget. The process of replacing pagan deities with Christian saints was not limited to Europe. As Christianity spread throughout the world, it encountered a variety of indigenous religions, and the early missionaries often sought to replace the deities of these religions with Christian saints. Replacing indigenous gods with Christian saints in colonial South America was a significant aspect of the spread of Christianity in the region. When the Spanish and Portuguese colonizers arrived in South America in the 16th century, they brought with them the Catholic faith. They initially attempted to convert the indigenous peoples to Christianity through peaceful means, such as the construction of churches and the establishment of missions. However, these efforts were often met with resistance, and the colonizers resorted to more forceful methods of conversion, including the use of violence and coercion. Many indigenous peoples were forcibly baptized, and those who refused to convert were often punished or killed. But, similarly to late antique Rome, the church turned to a softer way of exerting its influence to help Christianity more seamlessly blend with the religious practices that had been held for centuries. To facilitate the conversion of the indigenous peoples to Christianity, the colonizers and religious orders often sought to replace the indigenous gods with Christian saints. For example, if there was an indigenous god of the sun, he might be replaced with St. Thomas, the patron saint of sunsets. Or, if there was an indigenous goddess of fertility, she might be replaced with the Virgin Mary, the mother of Jesus. In fact, there are many paintings and representations of the Virgin Mary shown as the ubiquitous Pachamama of the indigenous religions. As mountains and rock formations were often revered as sacred, the Virgin Mary was represented as a mountain, spreading her life-giving powers to those devoted to her. This approach allowed the colonizers and religious orders to incorporate elements of the indigenous religions into Christianity, making it easier for the indigenous peoples to make the transition. It also helped to spread the new religion by offering a familiar framework for the indigenous peoples to understand it within. Along with the more brutal forms of forced conversion, this proved to be an exceptionally powerful method and led to Christianity being the dominant religion in Central and South America to this day. While the creation of the College of Saints was not the sole reason behind the success of Christianity first in Europe and later around the world, it was certainly a successful tool to co-opt the existing religious beliefs of non-Christians. If their daily spiritual needs could be met through a Christian alternative, conversion and belief in God and Jesus became a much more appealing option. So what do you think? Are Christian saints just replacements for pagan gods? Let us know in the comments below. For more videos on the most amazing forgotten parts of our history, be sure to subscribe to the Intrigued Mind channel, like the video, and leave your suggestions in the comments below.